Hello friends, uh, let us go further and learn more about electromagnetic spectrum and something called Planck's constant. Okay, and what are the Planck's theory? Uh, see, electromagnetic spectrum, if at all we arranged, this is the electromagnetic spectrum. If at all I and arrange them in the increasing order of their wavelength, you see the first uh, will be cosmic waves, which has the highest frequency. Then you will come across gamma rays, then X rays, then ultraviolet rays. <coughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> then we have visible region, infrared, that means near and far infrared, microwaves, and radio waves. And this is the range of their frequencies. So 10 power 14, 10 power 13, 10 power 12. So this is how the entire frequency ranges. Okay, while the wavelength keeps increasing frequency will always decrease so I'll, i can write it this way from left to right if you see wavelength lambda keeps increasing while frequency decreases okay. so consider if at all the same white light has been passed through a prism now okay so if at all uh, complete white light this is the white light if at all I pass this white light through a prism above which above this region you might have infrared here you will have ultraviolet but you will see some light here which have different colors what we call it as as Vibgeor colors okay <coughs> and here all the color will <coughs> submerge into the other that means it's not like you have anything distinct so violet will slowly fade into indigo and similarly indigo will fade into blue then green and so on it has been identified by Max Planck it has been identified by Sir Max Planck that energy of any such radiation may it be red light or uh, red light or orange or yellow okay this energy would can be given as h into nu okay where h is known as the planck's constant okay this is a very very important term so h is known as planck's constant and e is equal to h nu so nu can also be written as c by lambda so therefore e is equal to h c by lambda this is another way of writing it so where nu is your frequency c is the velocity of radiation and lambda is your wavelength it's a very important correlation now going further what are the main postulates proposed by max planck according to max planck's quantum theory the main points that he emphasized on that the substances any substances radiate or absorb energy discontinuously okay that means it will not uh, absorb energy absorb or radiate energy continuously as in you will not have any continuous wave as such in the form of small packets of bundles of energy like if at all I say a wave travels this way I can call this as a continuous wave While if I say discontinuous, it means more like one wave is completed, then the second wave, then the third wave, the fourth wave, and so this is a discontinuous pattern. So Planck's theory says the same thing that waves does not travel this way, rather radiation always travels as a discontinuous pattern. Okay. And in the small packet of bundle of energy so this is one of that bundle of energy okay so bundle of energy okay. so these bundle of energies are what we call it as quantum okay. so and in case if it is a light if it is a white light we call that as photon okay this is what has been identified so energy of uh, any quantum energy of any quantum will be directly proportional to its frequency okay right so e is proportional to nu 
that's how we got e is equal to h nu where h is your Planck's constant and the value of Planck's constant is this much 6.626 into 10 power minus 27 ergs or 6.625 into 10 raised to the power minus 20 uh, minus 34 joules second okay so this is the most frequent used uh, constant value 6.626 or 6.625 into 10 raised to the power minus 34 joules second okay so <clears throat> Planck says that anybody which radiates energy will always be in the form of simple whole number multiples of simple whole, whole numbers so that means it would be h nu 2 h nu 3 h nu or n h nu so therefore here n represents the total number of photons okay. so total number of photons or quantums okay. so i can always come with a form I can always come with an formula that E is equal to N H nu where N is the number of photons and H nu is the energy of a single photon. <coughs> sorry e is the total energy and h nu is the energy of single photon and n is the number of photons now let us see what exactly is atomic spectrum this is one other very another very important concept <coughs> see Atomic spectrum is slightly different than our electromagnetic spectrum. What are the types of spectrum we can see in here is one, one is called as emission spectrum. Emission spectrum <coughs> corresponds to again two types of spectrums. Uh, <coughs> majorly I can call them as either they come as continuous or discontinuous patterns. Okay. So imagine when a white light has been sourced and pass through a prism okay it splits into different colors see so when white light is passed through a prism we usually see the re refraction undergoes in this fashion okay so we can see all the colors mixing up nicely in one another right from violet to red okay so you can see the wavelength varies from 4000 Armstrongs to 6500 Armstrongs. So this is what we call it as a continuous spectrum. Okay, so this is the continuous spectrum of white light <clears throat> Now imagine the same white light has been uh, produced, okay <coughs> Sorry. A similar kind of light has been produced uh, By taking hydrogen in the discharge tube when you take hydrogen gas in the discharge tube I connect this to the battery source then there is some light or there is some emission uh, there is some light being produced here if you pass that light through the small slit and on the concave lens then it will fall onto the glass prism and it will start refracting but unlike giving any mixture of colors now this will give you sharp colors only four five lines okay so in hydrogen case you will normally find uh, a red color and a, a green color you know then we have magenta color then we have blue color right so you'll see only sharp lines forming okay or uh, the two four five lines okay these kind of line formations okay is what we call it as atomic spectrum okay or since they form more of a line the form of more of a band we call them as line spectrum like for instance if you see it here uh, this is how the line spectrum happens you know for hydrogen if at all you heat hydrogen and you uh, estimate the uh, I mean if at all you observe the pattern 
this is how the pattern comes they'll you see the entire spect uh, spectrograph is completely dark except one two three four five colors similarly for helium you might see three four colors okay for neon you might see some colors so this way if you see <coughs> only some amount of colors are been absorbed absorbed when it comes to these gases so and they are they appear more like simple broad lines so that's why these bright lines are called as line spectrum so we just discussed what exactly is a continuous spectrum okay and then we also saw what is a line spectrum so continuous spectrum uh, usually happens when you have uh, any element being taken and it might be giving a white color light for example if at all we have uh, electrical glow lamps or carbon arc this will always give a white color light and white color light passing onto the prism will always give you as a continuous spectrum while line spectrum is when you have a discharge tube uh, in which a gas is maintained at a very low pressure then also it will emit some lights uh, then also it will give some light but most of them will be dark spaces okay hence that's called line spectrum <coughs> band spectrum is we also have something called a band spectrum here for example if at all you take the vapors of calcium barium or even nitrogen gas okay then they will give you band spectrum that means it will form more like a band <coughs> oh, sorry <coughs> then we have something called absorption spectrum so we have been discussing two types of spectrums one is uh, emission spectrum the other one is absorption spectrum okay so <coughs> what is an absorption spectrum now okay in absorption spectrum the entire light is been absorbed by a particular substance and whatever that is remained has been passed okay so that remained radiation is what we call it as an absorption spectrum we'll see more details when it comes to the bohr's model now let us try some problems based on planck's quantum theory uh, here is the question find the magnitude of energy associated with the light having a wavelength of 3000 armstrongs so it means you need to uh, first see what are the given information is so the given information we have it is wavelength uh, lambda which is given as 3000 Armstrongs and we also know the value of speed of light which is 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meters per second so from here we can calculate what is the frequency so frequency nu will be equal to c by lambda so c is 3 into 10 raised to power 8 divided by lambda which is 3000 Armstrongs can I write Armstrong as 10 raised to power minus 10 meters right so this is what it is been given <coughs> so 3 goes 1000 times here so 1000 as in I can write this as 10 power 8 multiplied by 10 raised to power 10 multiplied by 10 raised to power minus 3 okay because this 1000 I can write that as 10 raised to power minus 3 in the numerator so this includes 10 raised to power 15 <coughs> so 10 raised to power 15 per second so per second is nothing but hertz so you can write this as 10 raised to power 15 hertz our intention is to calculate the energy so we just learned that energy of a photon will be equal to h into nu so h value we know that 6.62 6 into 10 raised to power minus 34 this constant value will always be given to you into new value which is 10 raised to power 15 and remember the value of Planck's constant h is in joule second so this is the SI unit so this gives us 6.626 into 10 raised to power minus 19 right so if you subtract this you will come across minus 19 joules minus 19 joules this is the energy 
sometimes question is asked in to calculate energy of a photon in electron volt how do we calculate that one electron volt is equal to 1.602 into 10 raised to power minus 19 joules so this is the conversion we should remember here right so that means if I want this uh, energy to be in electron volts so what can I simply do energy of this photon I can write this as 6.626 into 10 raised to power minus 19 divided by 1.602 into 10 raised to power minus 19 so whatever the value you will get that answer will be in electron volt So I, ho I hope you understood that how to calculate the energy of any photon given the wavelength. Okay. So first always assume the speed of light is given 3 into 10 raised to power 8 and the Planck's constant. These are the two important terms you should remember. One is the value of the Planck's constant. The other one is the speed of light. If you know these two terms properly, substitute in the formulas, you will be able to get this answer. Okay. Sometimes you will be provided with the uh, content of energy of a photon and probably you might have to find out the lambda okay either cases you can find out what exactly is the energy or wavelength or uh, frequency associated with it yeah so we learned that the energy of any photon can be represented as h into nu or hc by lambda okay so this is how you remember it so energy of a photon can always be written in either of these forms